Mental health is a growing concern and a really prominent issue within the workplace right now. We spend most of our lives in work. We spend a massive amount of our week in work actually and therefore the workplace has got a really a huge amount of power in the ability to deteriorate our mental health but it also therefore has a massive amount of responsibility in the progression and the development of our mental health. And as a result of that, the employment sector and workforce environments need to be doing a lot more in the development of employee mental health and this week on Get Sight, we're going to be taking a look at the issue of mental health issues within the workplace and actually how the workplace can be developing positive mental health within their employment sectors. You don't need me to tell you about some of the issues that go on within the workforce right now. There's so much stress and anxiety that's attributed to our working lives and more often than not, many people find their works just downright unenjoyable. And all of these things combined can result in the working environment and our working experience contributing to deteriorations in our mental health. But the issue is far more severe than I think we appreciate. So let's take a little look at what the extent of the mental health issues within the workplace actually are. It was recently understood by the World Health Organization that mental health issues within the workplace are one of the leading causes to deterioration in enjoyment for employees within the working environment and also organizational productivity. So this is an issue not only for the individual, this is an issue not only for the individual mental health, but also for organizational settings as a whole and their productivity. Mental health issues harm the individual and they harm the companies. That same World Health Organization report found that mental health issues were the single biggest contributing factor to loss of days worked from people having to miss due to sick days and also deterioration in productivity. Mental health was the biggest contributing factor to that. And today, more people are diagnosed with mental health illnesses in work than ever before. In the past year, 31% of the workforce have been diagnosed with a mental illness. You think about that in retrospect, you think one, almost a third of the people that you work with have likely been diagnosed with some form of mental illness. Now that might speak to mental health difficulties as a whole. It might not just be because of the working environment, but we're gonna go into a little bit of detail about how the working environment actually contributes to mental health issues amongst the employment staff. There are so many factors that go on in the working environment that actually contribute to issues within mental health. This is not just about, you know, mental illness becoming more of a mainstream thing or becoming having more media attention. This is the fact that actually working environments expectations of workforces can have massive implications for people's mental health. For example, 62% of the whole of the UK workforce last year reported to having experienced extreme stress due to really tight deadlines. Now that's a really staggering figure. You think about that, 62% of the UK workforce has stated that they, they find stress just too much and that's directly related to the expectations that their employers have of them. In addition to this, 51% of the UK workforce last year expressed real difficulty due to highly toxic working environments. So you think about that, That's, this is not just about extreme stress that employees experience in an employment sector. This is about the bigger picture as well. This is actually about how working environments impact our mental health. So when a working environment is extremely toxic, that can have real direct correlations to our well-being, our mental health our mental well-being, and 51% of the UK workforce are stating that the working environments are really, really toxic and as a result having implications for their mental health. Again, in the same report, 24% of the UK workforce stated that they were working excessively more than they're contracted. Now, we've all been there. We've all had those days where we've had to work longer. We've all had those weeks where we've had to work longer. But 24% of the UK workforce saying that there are extreme demands, that they're having to work excessively more than what they're contracted, speaks to the regularity of that. So that's a regular thing on a daily, weekly basis. People are having to work excessively more than they're contracted. And as a result, things like stress can increase. And as a result, we can see real uh, negative implications for people's mental health. I recently did a podcast with uh, an individual called Scott Batty, who does a podcast called Food for Fitness. And we talked a little bit men about mental health and he actually brought up the subject about being busy in today's society. And you know, wearing that badge of honor of having your 80, 90, 100 hour week and he's absolutely right. In today's society, it's deemed only appropriate that you are super busy. You know, I pitched it to you. When the last time that somebody asked you how your day or how your week had been, what was your response? I know for me, more often than not, I make sure that I try and say, oh yeah, it's been really, really busy. There's days that I'm not so busy, I might still say that. We still wear that as a badge of honor and we need to challenge ourselves to actually see 
this through a different lens. You know, we're speaking about an issue that has real implications for our mental health, but we're trying to wear it as this badge of honor. And we can see it in those statistics, you know, 24% excessive working hours more than what they're contracted, that's severe and it's gonna have huge implications for mental health. One of the issues about mental health and mental illness in the workplace is that there is still a huge amount of stigma correlated to this. 300,000 employees in the UK lose their jobs each year due to mental health issues, that's staggering. Of the 31% that are diagnosed with a mental illness that we spoke about earlier on, just 13% of that 31% felt comfortable in approaching managerial staff to actually talk about their mental health difficulties. What's even more concerning is that 15% of that 13% stated that their expression of mental health difficulties in the workplace led to disciplinary actions and even terminations of their contract. So people are losing their jobs, their working experience, their working environment is becoming even more toxic simply because they're expressing the difficulties that they're having with mental health that's directly correlated to what they're experiencing in work. So in many ways, working environment is one of the biggest causes of issues within mental health and it's also one of the biggest factors that's stopping mental health development or as in development of positive mental health. It's simply not doing enough. Last year, Time to Change, an organisation in the UK, conducted a study of 2,000 businesses. It found that 56% of those 2,000 businesses would not hire somebody if they expressed that they had had an, a history of mental illness. Now again, you think about that, that's not as if somebody has a mental health illness right there and then, that would still be stigmatizing. But if somebody was to say, oh yeah, you know, I had a, a, an issue with anxiety or depression a few years ago, 56% of those 2,000 businesses stated that they would not consider hiring that individual because of that mental health difficulty that they had experienced. Now that same survey, sought not only to understand what employers thought about mental health issues, but what employees and what their experiences were of mental health issues within the workforce. And 92% of employees stated that discussing mental health issues would likely damage their career. Now that's a vast, vast, vast majority of people that are stating that talking about mental health issues or talking about mental illness within the workforce is still highly stigmatized to the point where their, their career could be damaged. This is an issue not only reserved for within the UK, the European Agency of Health and Safety within the workforce conducted a study of 31 European countries and found that 40% of employees within those countries stated that they absolutely would not talk to their managerial staff about any kind of mental health issue that they were facing. Not only would they not feel comfortable in talking about mental health issues, they wouldn't even feel comfortable in talking about the factors that contribute to those mental health issues. Things like excessive um, demands, tight deadlines, excessive stress, these kind of things that you should be talking to your manager about and if left untreated can lead to mental health issues, they still weren't comfortable talking about those factors. This is a hugely challenging issue and many know who watch Get Sick that one of my main passions is in men's mental health. My other main passion, one of, one of my real passions within mental health is mental health within the workplace. The workplace has got such power in its ability to deteriorate our mental health and it also has massive responsibility in the development of positive mental health. We spend at a minimum seven or eight hours a day in work. As a result, the workforce has got a huge responsibility for our own well-being because it contributes so much to our well-being and because of the amount of time that we're actually in that workforce. This is a kind of double-edged sword. So much of the factors that contribute to mental health are ones that we experience in work and we're still not experiencing enough support and benefit from the workforce in order to improve our mental health. Now, like I said earlier, this is not just an issue for the individual. This is also an issue for the work environment themselves, for companies themselves. Mental illnesses in the UK cost UK businesses £38 billion last year. That was primarily due to leave from work and lack of productivity. In the USA, it's $189 billion that, were that was lost last year. Now that equates to $1,200 per worker per year. Now that's staggering. There's so much profitability, there's so much production, there's so much money that's being lost for businesses across the world due to employee mental health. So with all these staggering statistics, all these really scary insights and facts, you may be asking yourself the question, what exactly should workforces be doing and what can you do as an employee to help improve an understanding of how the workforce has its role to play in the development of positive mental health. Now it's true to say there are plenty of workforces that do consider the mental health of their employees and do consider the well-being of their employees, but research has recently stated that many of the external interventions or additional interventions 
that are utilized to improve the well-being of their of employers it's around about things like healthy eating and exercise programs these are the kind of things that are primarily focused on now don't get me wrong this kind of stuff is really important but there is still a lack of consideration about mental illness and mental health within the workplace a recent study was conducted in the uk that sought to better understand the in interventions that employers utilize to help with the well-being of their employees this survey found that the interventions utilized were not very helpful often and they were seldom subjective enough to, for the individual to appreciate. These were really objective interventions that just looked at what healthy eating meant or what exercise meant and it didn't get down to the nitty gritty of what those employees actually needed. So what are some of the things that employers should be doing? Well, in my opinion, every employer, every organization, every company should have what's called an employee assistance program or an EAP. Now, these can be relatively priced. They can be from you know a couple of hundred a year to much much more than that but around 500 pounds a year is what a company has to spend for when their employers uh, when they have a staff force of around about 10 people now these fundamentally mean that employees can access free therapy up to a certain number of sessions through an external organization it's basically where a company has a deal with a therapeutic company to provide sessions for the employees there's also something to be said about online resources and access to content online that employees can access through the organization that can help benefit their mental health in their own time. There's also definitely something to be said about a change in working culture. In many countries in Europe, such as Sweden, there's been introductions in things like a five hour working day. There's some companies in Sweden that have introduced this, this culture where they work from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. five days a week. They found both increases in employee well-being and employee mental health, and also organizational productivity in just that five, a day, five hour a day time frame. There's even been other countries that have implemented a four day working week. Now these come with no changes in salary, but basically what would happen is employees work from Monday to Thursday. They have uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday off. And again, they report both increases in employee well-being and mental health and also increases in organizational productivity and profits. Now that might sound like a real big step forward, but it speaks to the fact of how employment sectors and organizations actually have to change their understanding of what working means in today's culture. Mental health is such an issue. Mental illness is such an issue within the workforce and we need to start appreciating it better and we need workforces to appreciate it better and actually do something about it. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Get Sight. This week we've been taking a little bit of a look at mental health and mental illness within the workforce. There's a lot of scary statistics there and a lot of things that maybe you can consider and hopefully your organization can consider as well. If you've been enjoying today's video, guys, then make sure to hit that like button. You can comment on the videos and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you've been enjoying Get Psyched, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and you can hit that little bell next to the subscribe button and you'll get weekly reminders of every time I upload every Monday. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and hopefully catch you next week.